This has to do with this idea of, of technicism. We first saw technicism at some of the, at the heyday of the the scientific revolution. So this would be we could say the the late eighteenth century, eighteenth century Europe specifically. Um, <clears throat> and what technicism was at the time was the the formation of the the technocracy, if you will, the proto technocracy, in that it is a joining of industrialism and scientific experimentation. Now, it's my argument that we are now going through a new age of technicism, uh, whereby these this this relationship between industry and and experimentation is is being re-emphasized in a way or it's it's evolved right it's clearly evolved and now it has it has become the 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 leading factor in in society culture and human development we can understand that this is exactly the foundation of all of this uh, industrialism we could look at as the the scientific machine that creates and builds designs all of these different forms of technology and scientific experimentation of course it's a process but it's also a motive it's a desire right it's a behavior it's an act right experimenting with things such that uh, safety is is an afterthought right and what's interesting is this is exactly what we're experiencing right now with this medical complex uh, through the through the pandemic situation is this new move towards a new type of industry a new type of transhumanist industry but also a a new a new flair of experimentation and we see this specifically with the quantum biology and nanotechnology not just in labs though not just on animals i'm talking live experimentation on human beings we are reaching a new a new level of technicism in this this uh, this uh, second machine age or as McAfee would call it or fourth industrial revolution as schwab would call it and this is just to give us a foundation of how this is happening how this is so easily happening and it's allowed to really control society now i think most people today and let's just be completely honest here are less educated and i don't mean in the sense of schools right I mean in the sense of deliberate knowledge seeking. School isn't, edu real education is not accomplished through schooling, okay? Schooling is more of a socialization, it's more of a conditioning, it has nothing to do with intelligence or knowledge, at least for the most part, the greater part. But most people today are educated in a, a compulsory sense, but they lack the, the motives and the, the deliberate nature of knowledge seeking. So when you have a population that doesn't really respect the, the mere concept of learning for the sake of learning, you have a population that relies on gut feelings, intuition, uh, and intuition of an, ignorant of an ignorant population is not necessarily trustworthy intuition. I believe intuition can definitely be uh, useful. But when a population is vastly ignorant, that intuition is not a good source of, of anything. So when you have a population, for the most part, the greater part, that is not interested in learning for the sake of learning or understanding or even thinking for themselves, you will be hard pressed to, to find any type of significant movement that aims to question the motives and actions of the power that be the state, right? So that's why we don't see people questioning all of this technicism and this idea of industrialism and science, scientific experimentation, but also their worldviews have been transformed over time as well, right? Uh, people today don't believe in anything. They don't have a real stable worldview. They, and they don't know who they are. Identity and meaning is probably the biggest crisis right now. I, I think that's another reason why this is this movement has been so successful because most people don't aim to think. They aim for comfort. They think through intuition and emotion, gut feelings and so forth. Shallow, ignorant, and also their worldviews have changed such that they're confused on what reality is, what values are. So they become, I mean, in a sense, almost like cattle, 
right? I mean, just to be completely honest, it's a horrible thing. I don't mean to say this, you know, and to disparage. It's just being real. So what comes of this type of uh, technological determinism is nanotechnology, quantum physics, and brain sciences. I really see us going in the direction of, in a sense, mind-controlled, nudged and monitored and managed population of non-beings. And we're close to that already. You know, this whole idea of NPC and everything. People don't think for themselves, man. You give them the right foods and sugars and dopamine hits and products and, and they just do what you say. And it's, say, let's go back to the Gilded Age, the late uh, 19th century up until the progressive era, up until the 40s. This is a very significant period historically because this is when we, of course, we had Woodrow, Woodrow Wilson, we had FDR, and we had the whole New Deal and everything. And of course, we had the two world wars. So this this time completely, and of course, the Fed and everything, uh, this time completely restructured what America ever was to begin with. And it shaped the future to come culturally and, and especially technologically, not only through actual technique and actual development of technology but the mind state the philosophy of technicism this idea of in industry and experimentation coming together through the backing of the state such that they create the future it's a deterministic future and a culture was created out of that culture of uh, materialism through positivism the scientific method if it can't be if it's it's sensory based man is a mere element of the universe right Everything is equal. Man's not special in any sense. You hear this all the time in everything today. And it's this very scientific view that we're just part of the world. You know, we don't have a special position. You know, we're just another piece of material like anything else. Like this material universalism, all things are equal. And behaviorism is basically man is machine, like object, a machine like object. Automatisms and instincts, right? Everything is like a, a computer. This is where cybernetics came directly out of behaviorism and, and this idea of, of man as machine. And when you realize that they don't see us as a special entity or a special species that's God created and created in the image of God, you realize, well, if we're just like a rock, if we're just like a bird, if we're just like a tree, then why not? be a computer well at least most people that i've heard speak on the issue seem to have this position that that states we already do this right now with our cell phones our, there's already records of everything we do online through cookies and so forth uh, there's already a record of everything we do on social media what websites we visit etc there's already gps which is documented by central intelligence and the government geolocation and uh, we already have applications that house all of our credentials you know that we like our banking information that we, has replaced our wallets money is for the most part in a digital form so we use less cash so this is the position and driver's license information a lot of this stuff is through application or online in different ways insurance cards are digital now so what a lot of people say they say this and they're like look so this is no different that's the scary part and again, this goes back to people having the inability to think critically and the inability to actually use logic when they make decisions. Now, so this is a logical fallacy because what it fails to recognize is that though these situations are experienced through smart technology, definitely through our smart devices, they are experienced in a way that is disconnected, if you will. Now, in the ID, they'll all be connected and centralized not only not only is the the format different and we're not even going into the implantables yet because eventually the ids will be implanted let's just talk about like an, a qr code because that's going to be the first step now everything's centralized everything's interconnected and integrated into my qr code it's the same thing right well clearly it's not the same thing if it's all in one little card and it's through a qr code that's accessible in a way that provides all your information in one stop shop so clearly it's not the same but what's worse well maybe they don't realize that these ids are going to be working on a different 
on, on a, in a different environment. It's, it's going to be on blockchain, right? Now, the, the, the problem with this is you will have to meet certain requirements to gain access to that information. It's not just going to be at your disposal. And even your connectivity to these different sources of information will be conditional. So it's not the same thing. If you say the wrong thing on social media, if you behave the wrong way, if you step outside of the parameters of the cultural norms, today we see cancel culture. This idea of cancel culture <clears throat> is going to be industrialized. It's almost call it the social credit system. It's going to be very similar to that. So you think it's, it's the same thing because I could just go into my phone and do what I want already. It, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be a completely different system. It's going to be a new system. And they sell this concept of access, access. Everyone will have access under the condition that you follow the rules. What if you don't want to follow the rules? What if you like to break rules? What if you're an independent person? What if you're a, a true thinker? What if you don't believe the status or you don't follow the status quo and you don't believe the mainstream narratives? You'll be ostracized. You won't have access. In fact, you will be depersoned, vanished, and removed from the virtual world. And there's going to come a time where your virtual existence is more significant, influential, and important than your physical one. And this is how they lock you in. This is how they connect you. They lock you in through digital IDs. Now, what does that have to do with cyber attacks? Let's continue. In his talk, Blair didn't make the case for why having a digital identity was actually necessary to prevent a cyber pandemic, but rather that digital identities would be an inevitable part of the digital ecosystem. And so governments should work with technology companies to protect and regulate their use. Digital ID for me is a very big part of the future. They've repeated that. Inevitably, governments are going to move in this direction. Absolutely inevitably. And so what I think most, in, what's most important is that we, from the political side, wake up to the potential of technology and engage with the change makers inventing the te technology so that we understand it and can regulate, its, regulate it sensibly and not stupidly. Regulators. Uh, let me pull up what this truly is. Check this out. So here you go, guys. This is what, in my view, this is where all of this is going. Pandemic, the current cyber attack scares. This is the goal. Why do I say that? Well, look at everything that's involved. Healthcare. Hmm. Smart city access. There's the QR code for you. How are you going to be able to access restaurants? How are you going to be able to buy transportation tickets if they still exist? How are you going to function in the city metro the metropolis? Better have that juice jab documentation. Telecommunications. How are you going to even use your, uh, your phone or whatever they, they call it at that time? E-government. This is the spatial web uh, uh, digital prison, right? E-government. The, the virtual government where you will be controlled and dealt with, managed via remote control social platforms that's where the social credit ties in you see twitter is already being used as a symbol and we know the, the beast of, of twitter e-commerce shopping buying and selling humanitarian response travel and mobility food and sustainability financial services how you make a living all tied in to your digital identity what makes you think that there won't be parameters, rules, regulations, conditions that bar you from properly accessing these things when not following protocol? Digital identity, entities, devices, things, people. This is the introduction to the Internet of Bodies. 